Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today back to work on the Monarch 10 double E uh, DC drive retrofit project. And uh, we've got our panel that we're gonna mount in there to put all of our electronic components on finished up. So now the, the task is, is to get the components um, mounted to the panel and uh, to start wiring everything up. So uh, I've got my components kind of laid out how I want them. And uh, I've got over here my wiring diagrams that uh, show all the lines and the wires and everything that I need to run. So uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot of wiring to do here, uh, a lot of uh, parts to get clamped down, and let's get in here and get it done. So first off, I'm going to kind of show you my layout, and uh, we got to drill some holes in the panel for some wires to pass through, and then start figuring out where the tapped holes need to go to bolt everything down. And uh, once we get all that going, we'll start wiring it up. Let's get at it. So here you can kind of see the basic layout of uh, what we're gonna be working with here and, and the different uh, components of the, of the new control system that we're gonna be putting on the slave. And it really kind of centers around these two items here. These are both kind of like DC drives uh, that we'll be using to convert the alternating current to direct current and to control the motor speed. So this first one is a Parker 514C. Uh, this is the unit that was used in the, uh, the, the, the adaptations that were done over on the practical machinist site that we're kind of basing this off of. So we, we know that this, this one is going to work with this system. And if I'm correct, this one is mainly controlling uh, the, the DC voltage to the motor for the variable speed component. There's also this drive up here. This one here is, uh, it's from KB Controls, I believe, if I remember right. And uh, it, it does something very similar to this one, but this one here is actually adjusting the field voltage that goes to that motor. If you remember, there's actually six leads that go to it. Um, part of it is uh, varying the, the voltage. Part of it is, is has to do with the field. It's a four quadrant motor that we're using. And to really properly adjust the speed, you have to adjust two different things going to that motor. So we have two different controllers uh, that will be doing that independently. And they'll be tied together in a way that we can do it. And uh, one of the challenges with this type of a system is you almost you really need two potentiometers or two speed control dials to control these. However, um, in the final version of this, we plan to have a circuit board that we're going to add on here that will enable us to um, basically have one d input on the dial that will send the correct signal to both of these units simultaneously so that we can use the original speed control knob uh, on the lathe. And Monarch, in their speed control they basically had a uh, big rheostat looking thing that actually had two different um, potentiometers built into it. So you were basically doing the same thing. You were adjusting two things simultaneously. Uh, and we will eventually get to doing that. So the rest of this, I mean, these are some motor starters to, to kick things in when they need to. We've got some fuse blocks in here for protection, a bunch of these terminal blocks that will just allow us to connect wires. And uh, over here, we have some uh, control relays uh, that will basically be used to turn things on and off. So, you know, we got the main power, forward, reverse, run, enable, and run, hold, basically in those relays. And um, I still got to get the the relay to plug into this when it's on its way. There's also a timer that mounts one of these DIN rails that I'm waiting on it to get here that hasn't arrived yet. But that is basically the the layout of what's going to go on the boards. In addition to this. Uh, we will have the main on-off switch, the push-button switch over on the lathe that we'll um, basically be using to turn, thing, turn the power to the system on and off. Uh, like I said, we'll have the potentiometer on the lathe that will go into a board that will feed these two uh, units for uh, both the, 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 the voltage to the DC motor as well as the field uh, current to the DC motor. Uh, motor. Uh, there is a forward reverse switch over on the lathe and that will be tied in again into some of these relays in a way that will uh, turn the uh, motor on and off. We're actually will have a motor starter, a um, reversing motor starter 
that will be over in another box in the lathe that's not on these panels that will be involved in the forward and reverse operation. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we get to it. And uh, there is a control transformer on the back of the lathe that we'll also be using to uh, take the 220 volts down to 110 volts. Uh, to do some of the control stuff on here. And there's also a fuse disconnect mounted to the lathe that the power will be coming through to power all this stuff. So there you go. Uh, if you notice, I got a couple of places marked. Um, this is the panel we're using. I had an extra piece of metal, so I just, that's, that's representing the back side of this. So, um, right, we won't actually use this one, but I'm just laying stuff out on it right now. But my plan here is, is first I need to drill a couple of holes. There's two holes that go through the board. And again, that's for wires to pass through. Uh, I need to get that done. And then we'll start marking where the holes for the, the tap screws need to go and start bolting stuff down. Once I get one side done, we'll flip it over. We'll get the holes lined up for it, get those drilled and tapped, and uh, then we can start screwing everything down. So let's go get our pass-through holes uh, taken care of first and foremost. I've already kind of got the center of these two holes laid out. We're going to put a one inch diameter hole through here. So I'm just going to take a center punch. We'll mark the center of both of those. And we will drill that through. We're going to put a good countersink on it so we don't have any sharp edges for wires to catch on. I don't think we'll need any grommets on that after we get that nice countersink in there. I'm over at the Carlton radial drill, which is way overkill for these holes, but uh, I got it. We're going to use it. Let's uh, see. We're going to start out with a 3 8 inch hole. We need to be uh, probably about a See, we'll go with 990 RPMs. There we go. Just a pilot hole to get things started. Come over here to the other side. A second hole to drill. There we go. All right. Go up to a uh, one inch drill bit. <laughs> and we'll slow this down. Drill that one. All right. Over here and grab this one. Now I got a countersink we're going to put in here and we'll heavily deburr these. Make sure that we don't get any uh, sharp edges there. sides as well. All right, I like that. All right, I have my pass-through holes drilled and next thing I want to do is go ahead and figure out where I want my mounting screws to be. So I got everything laid out pretty much where I want it. And I'm just going to go around here and uh, put a uh, Sharpie pin dot right where I want all these holes. These are um, going to be drilled and tapped 
1032. So I'm just going to go around, find each one of them. Yeah, I need a couple in this uh, rail. That should be all of my mounting holes. I'm going to move these off. And once again, I'm going to take a center punch on each one of those and we'll go drill and tap them. All right. So I've got a number 20 drill bit here, which is the drill size for a 1032 tap. And uh, we're just gonna go around this and uh, drill all these holes out that we marked. I think we got all the holes drilled on this side. I'm gonna swap out here, put a uh, little uh, countersink in here and we'll deburr all those holes on both sides of the board. We'll just real lightly come down and hit each one of them. All right, got them all deburred. Let's go uh, lay out the holes on the other side and we'll come drill and tap those as well, or drill them anyway, and we'll tap them here in a minute. So first off, I went ahead and laid out and drilled all the other holes that we needed on the other side. I didn't show that on camera. So I got all my holes in here and we're gonna go ahead and tap them now over here on the milling machine. Um, we've just got a 1032 tap in here. We've got some aluminum tapping fluid here and we're just gonna kind of go around this and start tapping. So what I'm gonna do is I got my control. We'll go forward, we get through, we'll reverse out. So uh, we'll just go ahead and start by putting a little bit of fluid on there. Drill down, come out. And we'll do that for each hole. All right, I think that's it. If I counted right, we got 32 holes that we uh, tapped in here. I think we got them all. So now we need to go ahead and get our panel put back on its feet brackets over here. We made these in a previous video and got all the holes lined out for this. So um, I got some countersunk holes here already drilled and ready to go. Get this one on. So 
So I will note that on these uh, feet brackets that we did paint them um, since the last video so that they won't be uh, exposed to elements and rust and what have you. And we just got a uh, flathead screw through a countersunk hole going back to a uh, nut on the back side that tightens these up. We'll make sure we get them good and tight. All right. Here's our panel. And I think we can start putting some components on. All right, I got some uh, 1032 button head screws here. I am putting a lock washer on these. And we'll just bolt them right to the board. I'm just gonna do them loosely at first till I get all of them lined up and then we'll tighten them down. I don't want the screws uh, protruding out of the back of the board because we will have other components on the back side. So uh, I hopefully got my screws, right screws here that are just long enough to do what we need for them to do. I've got all these terminal blocks already on there. I need to take them off so that I can mount them properly. We need to get the DIN rail on there and then we'll put them back on. So next we'll put this DIN rail in. I'm gonna start up here at the top and we'll kind of work our way down. This DIN rail is designed for different components to just kind of snap to and lock to. So it's just kind of a mounting rail. It's kind of a universal mounting rail uh, for a lot of different electronic components and um, makes, uh, makes everything a lot easier to, when you have a good solid surface to, to mount things to. So we'll go ahead and finish getting these screws in this and then we can go ahead and get our first uh, components mounted to that. Because of the size of the hole in the back, I am using a flat washer on these as well as a lock washer. I'll just get them all loose and then we'll come back and tighten them all up right here. And that should lock everything in place. And we can come back now and put our circuit breakers back in. Let's see. Yep, start with this one in the bottom. It just kind of snaps in place. This one right here has a little um, hook on the bottom there. When it clips, it locks it right in. Tell you what, I'm gonna put one of these um, In pieces on the bottom there that will keep it from kind of sliding down. And that was seven. Eight, seven. These are numbered. I've got them all numbered. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. These are fuse blocks. Uh, they just open up and a fuse fits right down in there. All right, I'm going to put another end cap on here. These just kind of keep things from sliding around. And I need to look at my drawing and get my terminal blocks in there right. Hang on a second. All right, I'm going to put another end bracket in here. I want to leave a gap for some wires where they can go through. And let's see. I've got some of these that have uh, a connector across them. So basically you got two blocks that are all one. Uh, the first one's going to be one of those. And 
The second one is going to have three of them lugged together. And then we will come in here and build out how many more? One, two, three, four, five. Now, I got some more, but there is a, I'm gonna put a end cap or a, yeah, an end block in between them just to give me some, some space in between these to separate them out because it is different voltage and I wanna have them separated out. So, and then we have three more up above that. So we'll start with this one, one, two, and three. And then finish it out with another end block. All right. Let's cut that on. So up next are my two motor starters. And these are gonna mount right here. All right, we'll tighten all those down. And we got another one that goes right here. All right, we'll go ahead and tighten these down. And that will have that one mounted. And I think all we got left is the Parker board that goes up on top, at least on this side. We'll have to put some components on the other side of the board as well. All right, let me send it back up. And this should slide right up on those. See, this T handle's a little bit longer. That'll work better. All right, we got this side of the board done. Now let's get the other side knocked out. All right, we're on the back side now. Got another den rail here we need to get installed. All right, I think we got all these tightened up now. That one is in, I need to get another den rail over here. And I'm going to cut me a new piece. I want to get one that goes the whole length. So let me uh, get that cut. And I'll be right back. All right. So basically, I got to move this stack over to this rail. So we'll start with the end cap. And then we'll start putting these uh, terminal blocks, moving them over. Saw those terminal blocks, we'll put another end cap on here. Again, this is just to kind of give it some stability to kind of help hold those in place. And then we've got these uh, control relays. We go in here. There's four on this side. Put the end cap down here, which will help kind of hold those in. That's just going to keep them from sliding down. And we'll put another end cap up here. All right, on this side, we've got a control relay. So we'll start by. I'm going to start at the top, I think. Let's see, on this side, we just had a bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, yeah, a bunch of terminals here. 
ahead and build these out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's correct. I do have a timer that's got a mount right up underneath this, so we'll leave room for that. And we also have another control relay. It's also going to mount up underneath uh, these, and I'm still waiting on the relay to come in on that. Let me get a couple of M blocks to hold that in place. All right, and with that, pretty much have it built out. That's the back, and that's the front. All right, there we go. Our panel is all mounted. Like I said, I got a few little small things still to get in here when the parts come in, but everything is ready. That's the back side. This is the front side. And I'm real happy with how this is working. I mean, it's, it's plenty steady enough. Uh, it's going to get bolted down once it goes in the machine, but for testing purposes, it's just going to sit up on the bench and that's going to be, it's going to be just fine. That's going to be uh, no problem there at all. So uh, I'm real happy. That's, that's going to be good. So up next, uh, we're going to start wiring this and um, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off here. Uh, and we will, the wiring is going to be quite tedious and take a while. And uh, I'll probably bring you back and show you some of that as we move forward, uh, coming up here very soon. So there you go. More progress on the 10 E drive retrofit. Uh, hopefully everything's going to work out good. I think we got a good plan. Now we just need to get it wired up. So there you go, guys. Uh, with that, I think that will be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching the channel. Uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, uh, greatly appreciated. Leave those down below. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate that. It really helps out a bunch with the analytics over here on YouTube. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up there. Hit that bell icon. That'll get you notifications when new videos are posted. And uh, as always, a big, huge thank you, thank you to all the supporters of the site out there, people who support financially through Patreon or PayPal or what have you. Uh, we could not do everything that we do on the channel here without all of your help. And with that, guys, we'll uh, catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.